Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a Thunderbolt 3 dock that looks like a network attached storage box. This is from TerraMaster and it's got two drives on board along with a number of ports that you can bring over to your Thunderbolt 3 equipped PC. Pretty neat stuff and we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from TerraMaster. However, all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. Now, the price point on this one is $329. There are two versions of this product. This is the Plus Edition, which will deliver 60 watts of power delivery to your laptop, in addition to providing all of these ports. There's a non-plus version available that gives you the drive capacity here, but does not give you all the ports. It only has the display output and the Thunderbolt daisy chain, and it doesn't do substantial power delivery. So if you want more of a dock-like experience, I think the plus edition here is the way to go. Now again, it's not a NAS, so it does need to be connected to your Thunderbolt 3 computer for it to work. And what I've done is I've put a couple of solid state drives in here from Seagate. These are the Iron Wolf SSDs, but you can use one of these or you could use a larger three and a half inch spinning drive and you can go up to 16 terabytes in each bay. And depending on how you configure the drive, you could provide a maximum of 32 terabytes of storage to your computer as a result. On the front here, you've got a power button. You have some indicator lights as to what your drive activity is along with what level of power delivery you are providing to the laptop. On the back, we've got all of the ports and I'm gonna give you my other overhead shot here to step through those. Now you've got two USB 3.1 ports and these are actually Gen 2 ports which go at the faster 10 gigabit speed and we'll test that out in a second with a solid state drive. And that was nice to see here that the USB is actually at a higher rate of speed than what we typically see on these docks. Now just below it is a switch here for the RAID mode. Now this has hardware RAID on board and you can configure this to work in a number of different ways. So right now I have it set at RAID 0 and what that means is that both drives in the unit here, 240 gigs each, will appear as 480 gigabytes to my laptop and the way it works is that it writes in a striped fashion so it can get the maximum speed out of both drives. This is one of the more risky things you can do though from a data safety standpoint because if one of those two drives fails, you'll lose the entire array. Now they've got a couple of other modes that you can work under here. Uh, the one above it there is RAID 1. That is a mirrored scenario where one drive will mirror the other. And there you're only going to see 240 gigabytes, but if you lose one of the drives, you can pull it out and put in another one and it will rebuild that, uh, that RAID array without losing any data. And that's often the safest way to go, but you only get the capacity of one drive because things are being mirrored on both of them. You also have a mode here called single. And if you have that mode selected, what will happen is, is that each drive will show up to your computer individually as two distinct drives. It's like plugging in two different drives into your computer. You see them both on your desktop and you can operate with them individually if you want with whatever capacity those drives have. And the last mode you can select is called JBOD or just a bunch of disks. And this will combine the capacity of the two drives, but it doesn't stripe them when they're writing. So it won't be as fast as RAID 0 and what'll happen here is it'll fill up the first drive and then it goes over to the second one. But again, that one's not going to be as safe as running in RAID 1 mode. Now this does have a big fan on the back. It doesn't make all that much noise, but I would imagine if you had larger, hotter running drives, the fan would probably run a little bit faster. But generally it's pretty silent on the desk, especially with solid state drives installed. But again, it's gonna be a lot noisier if you've got larger spinning drives plugged in that will be making some noise themselves along with the fan here in the back. But generally, it was pretty quiet. Now, in addition to the USB ports back here, you also have a gigabit ethernet jack, so you can use this as a network adapter. Uh, we did do some testing with that a little bit earlier, and we were able to get uh, gigabit speeds out of that on my local network here. This is an iPerf test that we ran 
on a live stream a little bit earlier. And as you can see there, we were getting about 930 something megabits per second, which is typically what you'd want to see on one of these gigabit ethernet devices there. So no problems with that. You have a display port output here if you want to connect up a monitor. Uh, we did connect a 4K monitor and we were able to get 60 frames per second or 60 hertz uh, out of that, so no problems there. Also of note, it did not appear as though connecting a display impacted the available bandwidth for the ports or the drives on board, uh, so that was good to see. And then of course you've got your Thunderbolt connectors here. You connect your computer to this one in order to get the power delivery flowing. 60 watts will go into your laptop, which is enough for most ultra books. If you've got something like a gaming PC or one of the larger PC laptops, they typically require more than that to power them. So if you do have it plugged in and you also have your computer getting power delivered to it through a power adapter, the power delivery here will just not be used. But again, it's good for powering ultra books and that sort of thing. And then you also have a second Thunderbolt port here, which is more of a daisy chain. So you can connect additional uh, docks like this one to it if you want. Uh, you could also, of course, run a second display out of this as well. And because you've got 40 gigabits of bandwidth with Thunderbolt, you can do all of that without impacting performance too greatly there. All right, let's get this thing connected up to my Mac now and see how it all comes together. Uh, right now I've got it plugged into power, but it is off. And we're going to take the included Thunderbolt 3 cable here and connect that. The cable length isn't bad. It's actually a little bit more than I typically see with these kinds of devices. And I'm just going to plug it into one of my Mac's Thunderbolt ports here. Now this again will also work on Windows. Now when you initially connect it, nothing happens because you have to also power it on. And once you do that, you will hear the Mac, there it goes, start charging and everything is going to start making its way over to the Mac. So if we had USB devices and other things connected, those would start mounting up right now as well. Let's switch over to my Mac's display here. You can see the Terra Master drive is showing up. I don't have anything on that drive at the moment, uh, but you can see that we are getting the full capacity of both of those 240 gigabyte drives because we have this configured in RAID 0. If we were RAID 1, we would see a single drive with 240 gigabytes of storage. But if we had it in single mode, we would see two 240 gigabyte drives. And again, the choice is yours as to how you want to get everything configured. If you want to switch between modes, you're going to have to copy your data off, erase, and rebuild. Uh, so there's no easy way to switch once you've locked in one of those settings. Now, a little bit earlier, we ran a speed test with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. And as you can see here, the drives are doing about 400 megabytes per second on writes. And the reads are doing a little bit better on these two drives as they're more tuned for faster reads. And you can see we're getting close to about 600 megabytes per second there in RAID 0. So we would be seeing slower performance if we were in RAID 1 or just using these drives in that single mode. And that's one of the things that you run into when you've got SATA drives powering your device. They're not all that fast compared to all the NVMEs that are out there now. You might be able to find faster SATA drives so you could see better performance, but the max performance they're advertising here is only 800 megabytes per second, which is actually very slow for a Thunderbolt 3 device these days, especially given the speeds we're seeing off of just one NVMe solid state drive. But I think the combination of running with SATA here and how the drive controller is configured is making an impact on performance. Let's take a look at my Mac system info and see exactly what's going on inside. All right, so let's dive into this a little bit here and you'll see that we've got on the Thunderbolt bus our D2 from TerraMaster, but none of the devices that are on the dock here are showing up as Thunderbolt devices because if we go into USB here, you can see that they're all showing up on a USB 3.1 bus. And that's not unusual for one of these Thunderbolt docks. Typically all the devices that you're using are actually USB devices that are directly attached to a USB controller running on the Thunderbolt bus. A little complicated, but it's typically how these things work. And this one is no different. The problem here though, is that the drive controller is also a USB drive controller. As you can see here, it's showing up as a Toshiba controller. It's running at up to 10 gigabits per second, so it is running at USB 3.2 speeds, 
but we're not getting the full Thunderbolt bandwidth available to us for the drives. And that's partly to explain for the reason why the performance doesn't look all that great on this. But of course, we are dealing with SATA here, so you may not need all of that bandwidth necessarily. But this bandwidth is being shared uh, between the drives, the USB ports here on the back, and the network adapter. Now, a little bit earlier, we did run a network speed test with the drives going at the same time, and we didn't see any impact here. So there's enough bandwidth to at least support the two drives that I have on board, along with the Ethernet as well, without having one impacting the other. But we did notice that when you had a high-speed USB drive attached and you were running things off of the uh, internal drives, we did see a performance decline here. So we've got a super high-speed USB drive there. You can see the performance dropping as we're trying to read from the internal disks at the same time. So you will have some shared bandwidth here, but I don't think you're going to run into it all that much. But the good news is that the two USB ports here on the back, although sharing bandwidth, are also running at 10 gigabit speeds, which is great because if you do have one of these high-speed externals that you want to attach, you should be able to take advantage of that. So let's put that to the test here real quick. I just attached this little Sabrent drive that came in free of charge and full disclosure a few months back. And this one usually gets about a gigabyte per second in performance, just under that, around 900 megs or so. So let's open it up here real quick and run the test. And as you can see, we're getting pretty close to what I would get normally if this was attached to the computer directly. A little bit of variation here and there. We always see a bit of a performance decline when we're running off a dock versus a PC directly. But at these speeds, which are north of five gigabits per second, uh, we're definitely getting more out of the USB ports than we would if they were running at the slower five gigabit speed here. So they did well on the USB. Again, I'm just not crazy about the fact that the USB ports and the network are sharing bandwidth with the drive controller. So that of course begs the question, why make a Thunderbolt dock when you're just using USB for everything on it? Well, the reason is, if I flip it around here for you, is that Thunderbolt has a lot more capacity. So although this USB controller is going to max out at about 10 gigabits per second, we still have about 30 gigabits on the bus here back to the computer to send displays out with it. So what you could do is hook up a 60 hertz 4K display to the display port out here and then hook up a second 4K 60 hertz display using a USB-C to display port or HDMI dongle out of here and you'll have enough bandwidth for everything. Typically, USB-C docks don't allow for that. You maybe get a 4K 30 display going, but everything is gonna be real tight. Uh, here with Thunderbolt, you've got a lot more bandwidth to play with, which allows you to do other things, including attaching other Thunderbolt devices to the bus here as well, if you choose. So lots of potential here. Uh, not the best drive performance, so if you wanted something faster, I think a single NVMe drive is going to do much better these days. But it is a pretty cool concept here. The dock doesn't cost all that much more versus other docks that we have seen that don't have onboard storage. And if you don't want to go get a network attached storage device, but would like something that could provide a little mirrored RAID that you can plug into your computer when you need it, this might be useful for that. And it's fun to see how companies are taking different approaches with these docks. Here's one with storage built in. We've seen others that have GPUs built in. We've seen some docks built into the side of monitors. All sorts of solutions out there depending on what your needs are. And I would suggest if you do have a Thunderbolt equipped PC or Mac, go with the Thunderbolt version because those will perform better and give you a lot more flexibility, especially when it comes to connecting external displays. They might cost a little bit more, but we're starting to see that cost come down a bit. And we've even looked at docks that support both USB-C and Thunderbolt on the same device. So there's just a lot of choices out there and a lot of good ones. This one might be useful for some, maybe not for others. And hopefully you found this interesting. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.